If I don't break off every single one of these legs at least five times, I'll be pretty surprised. Master bait maker level stuff. For this build, I'm allowing for some pretty dainty, difficult to pour appendages, the hugging parts, you know? I'm gonna carve it to where it looks real good and I'll deal with having to pour them later. That's the level I'm at right now. I'll just deal with this very difficult to pour stuff later. Make it look good right now. These things just, they have detail everywhere. All along the arms, all along the tail, all up in the body, carvings everywhere. That'll make it look really spiffy once it's all done, but this is gonna take a bit. All right, that's just like a layout carving. I guess my mind wanted to have the carvings there before I shape the rest of the bait. Gives me a better feel of how to shape the bait, you know? Bait making is just all about feelings, you know? Did you know the story of these things? They actually hug your face and then they implant a tumor into you that makes you grow different cells and then you grow a chest burster inside of you. And that's like a baby xenomorph. Yeah, it's not an egg, it's a tumor that it makes you grow in your chest. That's disgusting. Super violent, super non-kid friendly stuff. That's all the fun facts you get. I remember watching Aliens when I was a kid. I don't remember how old. I was young enough to get very scared by that movie. All the disgustingness in it. Now it's coming full circle and I'm making my own face hugger and catching a fish with it. Fish are gonna show the face hugger what's up. Who should be really scared? All those vertebra along the tail are carved. Goes all the way up into the body there. That looks cool, nice transition. I'm gonna leave the body thick. I want that to be the biggest chunk of plastisol. When I'm pouring, as you can see, it's not perfectly flat on the pouring surface. There's gonna be silicone coming through and giving those legs some extra shape. So leaving the body chunky right there is gonna let the silicone pull up, stay hot, and flow out to those legs the ends of those legs. I'll have to do some finishing work probably and get the heat gun out and just painstakingly toil over this mold to get a clean pour. It's gonna be rough, I already know. I'm accepting that for cool soft plastic face hugger bait. I am accepting that. We're almost done. Just a little bit more sanding, I'll show you the finished thing. Once again, going for that paddle in the middle of a long tail. Hopefully it gives all of this thin, whippy little tail sex in it. Section, section, sorry. A nice wobble, a subtle one, you know? I think I'm just gonna give it some standard sealer because there's so much detail on this thing and some of it is pretty fine detail. I'm satisfied with the creep factor coming off of this. It's ready. That just shot off of this can. Landed right on that leg and put a big dent in it. You guys see the dent? What in the world? The savage can of water-based polyurethane right here. I think if I apply this water-based polyurethane to that though, it'll expand the wood a little bit and get it to seal where it was before. Dude, look at this crusty brush. What in the world is that? Straight out of the packaging. Big clump of bristles glued together. Universe doesn't want this bait sealed right now. Too bad. It's getting sealed. I'm gonna pray to the glue up gods that when I demold these legs, they don't break. They probably will, but what are you gonna do? Well, then you just cast a resin molding from the mold you just made and you got your you got your master again that's what you do i need to make a mold box for this
will this bucket ever run out of silicone? Not a ton left in there. This is going to be quite a bit of silicone. 20 ounce. 20.5. First try. Let's hope that we only need one attempt at making this mold. I don't know why we would need to make others. Maybe like tail adjustments or something. But this is a lot of silicone. Okay, time to break this master into 20 pieces. That is gonna require some flashing removal. Oh, I was so close. <laughs> we only broke one leg off, darn. I can glue it. Still a reusable master, no biggie. Broke off at a joint too, so it'll look just fine. So I'll be able to open up each one of those legs and make sure plastic flows in. Advanced open pouring, for sure. Let's do it. Okay, just a very black color. Going straight into this mold. I'm gonna see how the legs fill out, see what kind of finagling I need to do to make it work. Hopefully not much. I got antsy and over poured it just to see if that pushes more in. Man, I'm gonna have to re. I'm gonna have to go in and fill out each one of these legs. Oh boy. Sometimes it's easiest to just do this. Way over pour everything. And then grab the heat gun. And give it some swipes. Okay, let's see what we're dealing with. Dude, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Every detail shows up. It's just a mess of legs up here. We'll see if the soft blend works better to ha kind of have them hang down. I don't know. Maybe we do want them kind of staying articulated out to the sides like that. But they're scraggly and they're wobbly. I have a, I have a feeling that paddle's really gonna work too. It's time to test that out. It's hard to beat the satisfaction that a bag full of jigs brings you. Got eighth ounce, three eighth ounce. I got a bunch of quarter ounce too. Got some fancy boys. Kind of changes up the face hugger vibe when you throw a big ball head jig on it like that. I'll admit. But if that's what gives it best action, that's what it will get. There is pretty much already a face hugger in the test tank. Oh my goodness, look at that thing. A moldy house centipede found its way in there. What are you doing, Chip? Okay, I poured another one, letting it cure. Now we're gonna put this on a 1 8 ounce jig head now. And I decided to rig it so that the top is flat and the paddle is down now, just to see. It's always just to see. That is an unnecessary thing to specify. Oh yeah, now it's working. Even the 1 8 ounce jig head keeps that whole thing stable. That's kind of surprising to me. I was expecting some instability. Yeah. 
It's got a unique kick, that's for sure. It, it catches a ton of water too. It doesn't want to fall. Goes down head first. You give it any kind of retrieve and the tail's just... That's good. That's really good. Now what I'm interested in doing is making a very face hugger color. It's like a white, tan, fleshy at the same time. Very gross color. I'm gonna throw a little bit of white in here, get this started. I want it white, but I wanna be able to see into the white. A little bit of translucency. This is red highlight powder. White and highlight powders don't usually go together. Makes it kinda of hard to see the highlight when you have white as a base. That is why I got some, I think this is used motor oil is what this color is called. It's like two drops. That's all it needed. I have this color shift stuff. It's like a purpley to gold. It kind of like both those colors together evens out in your mind as a tan, but it's so shiny and I don't know. I'm just gonna put it in here and see what it looks like. Very little, more than that though. Yeah. Okay, that was doing correct stuff. We can add more. That's how I function. Just like check and see what it does a little bit and then know if you want more or not. I want more. Here is where if I add too much, I pretty much need to start over. This is red shad, less than a drop. I don't even know how you do that, but less than a drop. Probably by not shaking before you pour. I shook it very little, see? That added a lot of red, let's hope it diffuses. Okay, it did. That is it. That is a fleshy face sucker, hugger, color, sucker. <laughs> that really is it. I'm gonna heat this back up and pour it. It's warming that thing up a little bit. 360 degree, Bait Plastics 152 soft plastisol blend. Dude, that pretty much just filled out without needing any extra help. That's good. That is a much more correct color. Let's get that, that in the water. I just poured another one and that one, except for right there, which is not a big deal to me, completely filled out with only pouring in one spot right there and then moving down the tail a little bit. So this mold is not hard to pour. It fills out, that's good. It just needs a little bit of heat before the pour and we good. A little face hugging detail there. Considering what it is, I have zero complaints with how this mold fills out. That red really blended in there and moved around. Looks kind of cool. That one was a bit more gruesome, I guess you would say. That might be the last one we pour today. I'm getting them kind of stacked up. Got some more cooling off. So, yeah, so $550 comes to my account. My, uh, Ew. Ew. Do you like them, Chip? Chip ain't afraid of no face hugger. We're at Jesse's. I forgot to pop an SD card in my GoPro before I left, so we just have this camera. Sometimes different perspectives are good, you know? You can watch me get a thumbnail. So far, Jesse's Pond does not have it going on to the dock. Let's go 
get a GoPro and go to the river. That is enough finding out that they're not biting here. I've had enough of that. Bit greener. Still fleshy. That's a good color. That's a really good color. We got a GoPro. Well, it's not a GoPro, but we got a face sucker. We're at the pike spot. I remembered to lock the truck. Let's go get a pike. That's how you know you're in Iowa. The bush grows on the trees around here. I do a lot of fishing throughout the year. So people ask me if like the fish are biting in certain spots and it's weird because all that I know is that they didn't want a face hugger here. I didn't try anything else. That's, us that's usually the case, you know? I don't know if they're biting or not. They could totally be biting here. They just don't want face huggers. Dude, I can't believe I just caught that. I said nothing. I couldn't even tell it was a fish. I thought it was a stick, but it's official. Crappie. They're like face hugger tails. Just the tail, just the tail. That was official. I know I should have kept it and everything, but I got steak at home. I'm good. Let's catch more. I have zero confidence in the rest of the body catching a fish here, but Maybe we'll tie that on if we catch another. Dude. Okay, whoa. We just got a better one. Whoa, how, how long is this? It's the exact same length as my boot. We'll measure that later. I'll put it on screen right now. Once again, crappie, like face hugger tails. Be free. That was next cast. And then I put a whole face hugger on the jig and fished for another few hours and then went to a whole nother spot and fished for a long time and didn't catch anything. They don't like face huggers. I have fished a lot with the whole face hugger bait and they, not a single bite, not a nibble, not even a slight inclination that a fish was remotely interested. Nothing, no follows, no nibbles. I'm kind of sour about it. I, I have fished so much with that face hugger bait. False confidence in that bait. I don't know why. It is kind of an intimidating presence. Maybe fish get kind of creeped out by the arachnophobia vibe. Too many legs, a big whippy stinger tail maybe. I don't know. Maybe they're creeped out. Maybe they actually don't like face huggers, you know? I'll give it more of an opportunity this spring and summer in my kayak. I'll pull it out once in a while when I got nothing else to fish with, you know? We'll make sure that they don't like it. Maybe they do. I've just been unlucky. Until then. On to the next bait. I think once I start doing outros, he thinks he's gonna go outside soon. Like he can tell in my voice when the video is getting it. Like I always let him go outside after an outro. Don't I? You wanna go outside? Let's go outside. Oh my goodness. Very black color. Dude. Dude. Ew. That's disgusting. Bait making is just all about feelings, you know? 